Hi guys, Jay Smith here. Welcome to the Ask Golf Nut channel and welcome to Mizuno Pro 245 full review. I'll be doing full forgiveness testing on this one at the back end of the video because I'm excited to see how the massive upgrade in tungsten in the 245 works its way out when you hit it all over the face. More on that one later. But inside here, we have got that massive uh, update in tungsten that goes from 28 or 30 grams, I think it was in the original 225, up to nearly 50 in this one. So it will be interesting to see how that works. This is grain flow forged. It is uh, not the standard 1025E that we know and love in the blades. It does go into that, I think in the nine pitching wedge and gap wedge, but in this one, the seven iron that I've got here, it's the 4135 Chromoly. Now that will have a bit more of a stronger face, powerful, this, that, and everything else. And there is a transition of performance and technology throughout the whole set. So you do not get weird sporadic distance gaps between your nine and eight iron or your seven iron and your eight iron. So it's, it's for fluidity purposes. You've got the tungsten in there in the two to seven, you've got no tungsten in the eight, but that still is chromoly. And then to the nine, there's no uh, tungsten, but it is then down into 1025E. You've still got the copper underlay that we know and love to try and soften this old thing down. Bear in mind, this is a hollow bodied head. And so it has got harmonic impact technology inside here and they have done some things with the face to try and make it thinner and a bit more variable thickness, etc., to try and make it better off miss hits. Again, we're talking about miss hits at the back end of the video, we'll do all that. It does say that they've got more compact, but if you actually look at how much compact they've got, I'll probably put up on the screen there so you can see, Guys, it's not even a millimeter, so I wouldn't get carried away. It's not something that you visibly massively see when you put it down by the golf ball. You don't go, wow, this thing is tiny. It's tinier by a fraction. One other thing, it has got some increased bounce angles, but that's mainly in the like lower section, like your nine pitch wedge and gap wedge. Remember, Mizuno have never really been a high bounce angle manufacturer. Like Ping would be one of the most when they're firmly in double digits at the bottom end of the golf bag. This one, as you can see with the specifications on the screen, nowhere close to a Ping. Right, so let's go get the simulator on. Let's go whack it into a green. Let's go see how it feels, how it looks, how it performs. And then when it comes to the test that I'm gonna do off camera with this, I'm also gonna do it at three different speeds. I've decided to do it at three different speeds for a bit of fun to see how this 245 works at say 70 miles an hour swing speed and 80 mile an hour swing speed and a 90 mile an hour swing speed to see what happens when you talk about this 30 degree lofted seven iron, how well it performs, peak height, descent angles, control into a green when you vary the speeds and we'll also do the forgiveness side as well. Simulator is now on. We're at Tall Pines Golf Club. Hole eight is a par three of 173 yards. Shouldn't be a problem with a 30 degree lofted seven iron. The 245 looks basically very similar to a 241 by the fact that it says 245 on the back and the fact that the 245 being the biggest of the Mizuno Pro series, the top line is the thickest of all of them, but it's by no means big. I would say it's medium, no different to sole thickness. It's about a medium thick sole and blade length. Now, again, people saying the fact that they're getting more compact, it doesn't look that much different really, if any, to a 225 when it comes to its size. Now, I'm gonna be doing a full 225 against 245 review and also 223 against 243 and 221 against 241. Make sure you get subscribed down there so you don't miss that one when I do it. Right, let's go give this one a hit because it'd be interesting to see because obviously this is the hollowed bodied version, the hollowed body version with the tungsten in it to see what kind of sound it does make. We've still got the copper in there and we've got harmonic impact technology. So let's go see how much that technology makes a difference to feel. Yeah, powerful flight. Definitely call that a powerful flight. That was um, meaty on the hit. You can definitely tell that it's um, hollow body. Path is good, face is basically very, very good. It's two mil toe, two mil low, very good also. 36 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle at 175. You take that all day long. You can tell it's hollow bodied, you can. It's not in any way like the 241 or 243. Under initial testing, the 243 is actually very close to 241. It is very much closer, even though it's chromoly, it does feel quite nice. This one feels fine, feels nice. It's just a little bit more punchy. I can definitely see people blending these, absolutely, with 241. You might have to be a bit careful with lofts because of the staggering of it, but also 243 
I can see people blending these because these with the um, tungsten help, I can really see these ones helping out on the harder to hit longer irons. I mean, that's a little bit cutty because of my swing dynamics on that one's a little bit across and a bit open. Yeah, so on quad there, but you'd take it even with the green, which is running around from the pin. As you can see, there you go, slightly across, slightly open and nine mil heel. So, I mean, again, not the best strike, but 35 yards in the air, 49 degrees ascent angle. That's 12 foot away from the pin. It's just good. I mean, 175 total distance, you would take that all day long. These are very much so more powerful than 241, even though they look very similar to 241. They are completely different. With the tungsten, with the hollow bodied, you are gonna get a little bit more a little bit more punch, shall we say, than 241, definitely. It'd be interesting to see how these compare against uh, 243, because obviously 243 has got micro slot and stuff in there as well. But this, yeah, it's fun hitting these because of the sound you get from these. These are a little bit more um, rocket ship kind of noise you get from here. Again, slightly cutty. The safe side of this green is on the right-hand side. It's just good. I'll stop curving that way. Face is slightly open to a path, which is slightly across, still the same cut, and five mil heel as well. But that's seven, 38 yards in the air, 37 and a half yards in the air, and 50 degrees ascent angle. I mean, that is stopping properly. 50 degrees ascent angle at 174. It is just so, so good. I'm, I'm really excited for the fact that seeing how this works in forgiveness, because really, let's be honest, it's the tungsten the upgrade that's gonna help this the most when it comes to forgiveness. The 225, the old 225 done really well, but especially when it was launched, but as time's gone on, other golf clubs have been updated. The 245 needed a bit of an uplift in the old tungsten arena, and it has got that with nearly 50 grams of it. Let's go give this one a hit again, because it is quite addictive hitting this thing. Oh, that's a miss hit. That's a miss hit. Testing out the tungsten. Yeah, it was low on the face. Nine mil low, two mil toe, but it's still done very well, considering. Hasn't changed its launch conditions really whatsoever. Hasn't really changed its spin conditions whatsoever. Uh, ball speed, it's still over 120, so it's still doing okay. Bear in mind, I mean, again, that is low on the face, and this is where that tungsten is gonna help the most when you hit it low on the face. With that tungsten bar that goes all the way across, that's gonna help heel and toe as well, I'm looking forward to hitting it all around the face, heel and toe as well, to see how well this thing does. Well, you get one right out the screws and see how well that performs and then measure it up against. When you do smack it on certain parts of the golf club, which you really shouldn't be smacking it from. That's a better delivery. There we go. Slightly high on the face, but I mean, that's flying. <laughs> really is. Three mil toe, one mil high, that's fine. And we are 36 yards in the air, 49 degrees ascent angle. You could do this all day. These golf clubs are just so, so easy to hit. And even if you do mess up, they've got enough tungsten in there to kind of protect when you mess up. <laughs> one more go. I want to hit it one more time because this actually is quite fun. I could, uh, would I use these? Hmm. I don't know, I'll be honest. I still like my bladed sound and feel. I like the fact that the 241 has the smallest looks of everything, the thinnest top line, the thinnest soles, and I do like that. I am someone who likes tiny everything, but then everyone's different. But for me, would I go 245? Possibly in the long irons, yes, but not, definitely not in the uh, scoring irons. Oh, that's a miss hit, that's Healy. you'd hardly know. Look at that. That's done so well considering that was slightly low heel. Six mil low, 11 mil heel. That's 17 millimeters off of gross. And that is done very, very well. 34.4 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle, even from 17 millimeters off the middle and heel and low. Right, let's go have some fun. Let's go get off of this. I'm gonna do lots of testing now. I'm gonna to have to do the test at 90 miles an hour, at 80 miles an hour, and at 70 miles an hour as well, to see at what point this becomes non-functional. Remember, the Mizuno Pro range are gonna be, generally speaking, for the medium to fast swing speed player, because 
generally, again, people say when it comes to handicaps, the lower the handicap, which is going to be more like this, is going to be swinging slightly faster. Not always the case, but there you go. So it will be fun to do it at 90, 80 and 70 miles an hour to see how well this thing works. And we'll also capture some more extreme miss hits than this to see how well the 245 really does. So after hitting, I don't know how many shots with the Mizuno Pro 245 at three different swing speeds to try and encompass and encapsulate as many golfers as possible. I've also captured some interesting miss hits too. And so far more miss hit than we saw on camera. Some very, very extreme miss hits. Just see how the extra tungsten really helps the design. So let's quickly have a look at how it gets on at three different swing speeds. So I've got all the information on here now. I've put all the ball data first and all the club head data afterwards. You can see there the 70 miles an hour, the 80 miles an hour, the 90 miles an hour. So if we do the first one, the blue is 97.3 miles an hour. They're all launching at basically 20 degrees. So obviously swing speed doesn't really change launch whatsoever. To change launch, you have to either change your dynamic loft, definitely your strike point, definitely, or your angle of attack will have an influence as well. But all launching at 20 degrees, you've got the spin at say 4,000. If you go to the mid speed, it goes 4,500. And then when you go to the higher swing, uh, swing speed, it's 5,000. So that is a speed related spin uh, change. So as soon as you change your speed, you will naturally change the spin rate. But you'll see the peak heights go from 22 to 29 to 38. So you can distinctly see the difference when you change swing speeds but you see the descent angles as well. 48.4 degrees for a fast swing. A medium swing speed's got 45 degrees. And remember guys, when it comes to my own idea of what I like to see when it comes to um, as much control as possible going to a green, I like seeing 45 degrees. So 45 degrees is a lovely number because that means you're gonna stop basically on any green. Anywhere between 40 and 45, you'll stop on most greens anyway, but um, anything less than 40 degrees, it has to be a relatively soft green to have a chance of stopping. And so as soon as you take swing speed down to 70 miles an hour, you can see the descent angles are 40 degrees at a carry of 136. You can start seeing seven iron would be at 70 miles an hour, the seven iron I would suggest would be their last iron. After that, they go into something like a six hybrid or something to try and get that launch up even more peak heights and descent angles and extra carry. But yeah, 136, 159, 180. So you've got 23 yard gaps there and 21 yard gaps. So within one yard either way, they're both gapping exactly how they should do. And the speeds, yeah, 70.5, 80.2 and 90.1 within very small amounts, the exact gap that I want. The uh, attack angles, two degrees, 2.7, 2.8. All the face to path, uh, path is very very alike the lie is within reason alike subject to obviously deflection through speed and then loft is 26.1 25.5 and 26.0 strike is two mil hill one mil high two mil hill two mil high and one mil hill zero mil high so they are all very 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 alike let's go have a look at how forgiveness gets on this 245 because obviously we have got that tungsten that big upgrade the 50 grams, 48 grams, or whatever it is now, it's a lot. Um, we've got one here, first of all, it's right out of the screws. It's zero mil uh, low and one mil heel. So within one millimeters, it is right out of the screws. We've got um, a path slightly across to a face, 1.5 open. So it might be, a, you might get a 1.38 from this thing. It's going uh, 39 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle. So that again is stopping on any green at 39 yards in the air. So if we go to a nominal heel now, an eight mil heel, zero mil low, so within reason, very, just every everyday hit, it's a single digit miss, it's perfectly fine. It is off the heel, I'd much rather off the toe, but if it's off the heel, it's absolutely fine. It's going 1.36, so within reason, it's only dropping 0.01, and 36 yards in the air, 48 degrees ascent angle, very, very good. If you go now low heel, 11 mil heel, five mil low, 16 millimeters gross off the middle, now we are, definitely saying that there's potential for the tungsten to really have to engage and work in to try and keep that ball speed up and 1.34 so we're really only 0.03 from a 16 millimeters gross low heel miss is mighty impressive um, next one 81 miles an hour we have got uh, eight mil low three mil heel just a standard normal slightly thin shot and we've got an efficiency of 1.33 only 0.04 off of absolute maximum 29 yards in the air and 45 degrees ascent angle stopping only green even 81 miles an hour 
11 mil low, 4 mil toe, so we're now pushing the boundaries of low even more. I'm really trying to test this tungsten out to see at what point it basically shouts at back at me and says, no, please, no, no more. Uh, 1.31 efficiency has now dropped 0.06, but we are 15 millimeters gross off the middle and it is 11 millimeters low. If you imagine when it comes to these heads, um, there is not much room when you talk about how a golf ball is round. Obviously we don't hit the equator, we actually hit under the equator on a golf ball, especially with loft. And so the actual difference between where you should hit the golf ball in the face um, vertically and where the sole plate is, is actually not as high as what people think. And so 11 mil low is fairly low. And so it's dropped down to 0 uh, 1.31, which is 0 0.06, which is still very, very good. That's, and with a two degree open face, so that will increase deflection by a touch. So maybe 1.32 if I was to square the face up. So we've got one here, 14 mil toe, zero mil high. So just a standard 14 mil toe, which is still fairly toey. So not a single digit miss. It is a definitely double digit miss. 38 yards in the air and 49 degrees ascent angle at 1.34. So 0.03 off of perfect. And it's 14 millimeters away from the toe. This has definitely, the increase in tungsten has definitely, definitely added something to the 245 when it comes to its forgiveness level. And if you are, if you've got a set of two, four, uh, two two fives now, would you dump them straight away for two four fives? No, I would say definitely not. But if you are going to a golf club now and you are looking to go into something like a, a player's distance iron with the inevitable help of what uh, player's distance irons gives with tunks and everything inside them, this 245 now with that big old lumber tungsten is certainly doing its job when it comes to help and forgiveness. So we've got one here now for a bit of fun. Um, I want to see how much we can push it before it cries. So I've done one here, 16 millimeters low, one mil toe. 16. Now, how that managed to launch at 13 degrees and spin at 5,051, I do not know. Um, but it's, it did launch and it's gone 162 yards. We have lost a little bit of distance, definitely, but an efficiency of 1.30. Only 0.07 off of perfect and it's been hit there. That is wow. As in, normally that would be... Uh, it, that would be converted into a proper full-on near top. That tungsten is not only massively bigger from 30 grams to 47 grams, it's not only just bigger, but it's lower in the head as well. It is as low as Mizuno can possibly get it without it physically touching the sole because they want the sole to flex as well. When you hit it there, it's not the face which is really flexing because you've hit it so low. What actually is happening, the sole is flexing at the same time. That is why they have a fairly thin sole there. So the whole face and sole can react when you get a shot like that. So looks wise, well, if you like the looks of the 241, you'll like the looks of the 245. It's basically exactly the same as the 241, just a bit fatter in its line. So the top line's a little bit thicker, the sole plate is a little bit thicker, and the body is just slightly bigger in every dimension. When it comes to feel, there is a big difference between the 245 and 241. The 241 feels unmistakably blade-like because it is a blade. When it comes to the 245, it is a hollow body distance uh, player's distance iron and so it will give you that unmistakable punch off the face. This is something that I would definitely think about using in the longer irons going into the five and six iron. I could really see myself gravitate to something like the 245 when you're looking at trying to get golf balls up and launching in those longer harder to hit long irons. When it comes to performance, it's doing exactly what a 30 degree lofted seven iron should do. What it, I think what really shines out amongst the new 245 is its forgiveness off of some really weird hits, especially low on the face. And that is can only be because of the massive increase in tungsten. So hope you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up, go on YouTube, like it, so do I. Down there is a subscribe button. It's free and it's great for the channel if you could subscribe, so thank you. And next that is a bell icon, that's a notification bell. If you click that one, that will notify you next time I upload another video and talk about other videos. I will be doing the 243 after this and the 241 as well. And I'll also be doing the comparison between, uh, comparisons between the old and the new and also i'll be doing comparisons between this and say p790 and i525 and all the other ones as well so hope you liked it and we'll see you again soon